For thousands of years, humans have been using urine as a fertilizer. For seven weeks, I conduct an experiment to test how leafy green vegetables fertilized with urine compare to those fertilized with more modern methods. The urea in urine is rich in nitrogen, an essential element for the healthy growth of leaves. There are three control groups in my experiment, including in the brown pots, potting mix only with no additional fertilizers. In the green pots, blood meal. In the blue pots, an all-purpose liquid fertilizer called Pure Gold by Dr. Earth. Last, in the orange pots, our experimental group, the pea-fertilized plants. I chose leafy green vegetables for this experiment because... Leafy green vegetables require high nitrogen, an element which urine has a lot of. I chose Little Jim Lettuce and Purple Lady Bok Choy for my leafy green vegetables due to their fast maturities and similar required growing conditions. Can diluted human urine be used as a successful alternative to other fertilizers for leafy greens? Most of the research I used in my study came from the Rich Earth Institute. This organization supports sustainable agriculture by recycling human urine into fertilizer. At their facilities in Vermont, they operate the nation's first community-scale recycling program, which basically means they collect urine from donors in their community, sanitize it, and redistribute it to farmers in their area. Additionally, they conduct research and educate the public on pea cycling, including this guide for home gardeners that I used for my experiment. Links to these and additional resources can be found in the description. And because every good experiment deserves a good hypothesis. Hey, this is YouTube, not Harvard. The brown pots have potting mix only. Although I did not add any additional fertilizers to this group, the mix does come with a small amount of slow-release fertilizer already mixed in. The same potting mix was used in all pots. The green pots have blood meal. This group was fertilized with half a tablespoon of blood meal at planting per package instructions. Blood meal is high in nitrogen and commonly used for leafy green vegetables. As a slow-release fertilizer, it releases nitrogen gradually as it decomposes in the soil. The blue pots were fertilized with an all-purpose liquid fertilizer. I used Dr. Earth's Pure Gold liquid fertilizer. The package suggests fertilizing plants with one pump of fertilizer per gallon of soil weekly. Since my pots are closer to half a gallon, I gave each plant about half a pump weekly starting at three weeks. I accomplished this by measuring out three Close squirts enough. for four cups or about 946 grams of water. I then gave each blue pot two thirds cup, which is equivalent to half a pump of solution. The remaining solution was discarded. This fertilizer has equal amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Nitrogen is responsible for healthy growth of leaves. Phosphorus is responsible for strong roots and blooms and potassium is responsible for overall plant health. It's time to pee the plants. Since you're dying to know how I collected my pea sample, according to the aforementioned publication from the Rich Earth Institute, plants need between 3.5 and 5.5 gallons of urine per 100 square feet of garden space over the lifetime of the plant.
So given that our pots have a diameter of six inches or half a foot, we can use the equation for the area of a circle to get a surface area. Then we can use the urine requirements from the Rich Earth Institute to calculate how much urine we need for our pots over the lifetime of the plant. Then we divide by three to get nine to 14 grams of urine per week for three weekly applications. I decided to go with 14 grams because this is 14 grams of urine. It seems so little. Weird. Oh. And this is exactly how 13 year old me envisioned using algebra as an adult. Since urine alone can burn plants, I mixed one part urine with 10 parts water to make my fertilizer. So for 14 grams of urine, I added 140 grams of water. The orange pots were fertilized with this urine solution weekly starting at three weeks. I started at three weeks old to avoid burning delicate seedlings and stopped after three weekly applications in order to have two full weeks with no fertilizer prior to harvest to reduce the risk of pathogens since urine isn't entirely sterile. The blue pots of all-purpose liquid fertilizer and the orange pots or pea plants were both fertilized on the same schedule, once a week for three weeks. They each received about two-thirds cup of their liquid solution. During this time, the other two groups received two-thirds cup of just water. Since the type of fertilizer is the independent variable, that means everything else should remain the same. That means the same conditions. The same potting mix and containers. The same amount of water and the same watering schedule. The same pest control methods, including a kiddie pool to reduce slugs and caterpillars, baskets to prevent birds and squirrels from eating the sprouts, and diatomaceous earth to control caterpillars and other common garden pests. The same amount of sun, the same amount of rain. And the same immersion in the classics. Strange about learning. The farther I go, the more I see that I never knew even existed. A short while ago, I foolishly thought I could learn everything. All the knowledge in the world. Now I hope only to be able to know of its existence and to understand one grain of it. Is there time? Today is day 50 and the plants have reached maturity. Now, with a study like this, I generally feel like there needs to be a significant visual difference in order to make it worth the effort. However, I like data, so I will be collecting a few measures to gauge success. All bok choy plants did well, with good color and overall appearance. 
both the all-purpose liquid fertilizer group in the blue pots and the pea plants in the orange pots appear to have excellent size. One of the blood meal plants perhaps looks a little smaller than the others. Most of the lettuce did quite well with excellent size and color. Each group had at least one spectacular looking lettuce plant. The exception is one of the pea plants that wilted then came back about halfway through the study. I think this may have been the result of other factors though since the other pea plants did quite well. Lettuce can be fickle, especially in hot weather like we have in Florida. The roots of the problem plant did show a little bit of root rot the best. So, in conclusion, can diluted human urine be used as a successful alternative to other fertilizers for leafy greens? Yes, the weight of the bok choy was higher than that of all control groups in the study. While one of the lettuce plants in the pea group did wilt and come back, the other one did just as good as the lettuce plants in the all-purpose liquid fertilizer control group. If I were to repeat this experiment, I would likely use a larger amount of urine and a higher ratio of urine to water. Now, just for one more data point, taste. Hey guys, are you ready for some salad? some pizza. My name is Elizabeth Cherie. Please subscribe for more epic distractions.